Welcome to Rhino 6 Crash Course video tutorial. So the idea of this course is that in around one, one and a half hour, you will be able to make some funky, cool stuff with Rhino. Uh, when you start, this is the window you see. So please go to new, and here you can choose between small objects and large objects. It's basically a matter of tolerance. So if you are making furniture or product design, it's a small object. Architecture or landscape or urbanism, it's a large object. And in this case, we're gonna use small object centimeters, but it's really up to you. So we are going to 3D model this table. Um, so this is how Rhino looks like. You have four views. So top view, perspective, front view, right view. Here you have the most common comments. And here you have the command line. The command line is basically your best friend. Every time that you are lost, every time that you don't know what's going on or what to do, you just need to read what the command line is saying and it will make it clear for you what is the next step. Uh, one detail, to zoom in and to zoom out, you use your mouse scroll and on the top view, if you right click and hold it, you pan the view. The same for front view or right view. For the perspective, it's a little bit different. To zoom in and zoom out is still the scroll, but right click and drop will make it rotate the view. If you want to pan the view, you should hold shift and then right click. Okay, so just want to show you that if you right, if you double click the name of the view, it becomes full screen. If you want to go back, you double click here again. Super. Okay, let's start drawing the side view of the table. So in front view, and let's start with a polyline, which is this command. So when I put the mouse on top of an icon, it shows me the name of the icon. And if I click with the left or right button, it has different commands. So I will left click here and I will always pay attention to the command line. It will always tell me what I need to do. And if it's not clear for me while I'm running the command, I can press F1 and I will have Rhino help. And Rhino Help is, is really, really nice documentation because it's really clear how it works and it has all these videos showing what you can do with every comment. So since I was using Polyline, it go goes directly to Polyline. Okay, so start of Polyline. I will give a position in space. So I will type 90 comma 0 comma 0, which means 90 in X, 0 in Y and 0 in Z. So enter. So it starts here, 90 in X, 0 in Y and 0 in Z. And let's go to the next position. I will now, instead of type the, the exact position, I will just say that the length of the segment is 72 units. So I just press 72. And now this line has 72 centimeters in my case. 
And now I need to tell what is the direction to go. So I want to show you here on the bottom, there is this ortho command. Ortho will make it only orthogonal. So only in X or Y direction. Okay, so I can click here and then I can set one more segment, this time 180. And then I need to tell on this direction. And then 72 again on this direction. And this is the end of the polyline. So it's telling me here, next point of polyline, press enter when done. So I press enter. And this is it. I made the first polyline. Okay, so now let's offset this curve. So I can come here on this uh, command here. There is like this small triangle on bottom right. It shows me some options of curve transformation. In our case, we're gonna use this one, offset. Or I can just type offset and press enter or space. So here in between parentheses, I have a few options. The important thing is to say distance equal five. So I click on distance, I type five and press enter. And it says select curve to offset. I say this one. And now it says side to offset. I will offset, offset inwards. Cool. So now that I have two curves, I will edit the new one. So I will edit its control points that you can click here or press F10. Okay, I will select the first control point and I will move it so I can drag and drop, but then I don't really it's not really precise, it's something more intuitive and visual. Or I can select it and use the move command that is here, or I just type move. So point to move from, I want to move five centimeters in direction of the center to the right. So I can click in the point itself and type five, press enter. And then I need to, to click the direction. So it's to, to the right. And for the second curve, I click out to deselect. For the second point, I select it again. I can say move again. Can click anywhere, type five and now I move this one. So I will show you something important now. If I select this one and I click on the next one, I deselect the first. So I need to select two at the same time. I need to hold shift when I click. And if I want to deselect something, I can hold control and click on it again. And then an important detail, I can drag and drop from an empty point on the screen to select with this rectangle. If I select from the left to the right, I will only select the objects that are completely inside the rectangle. So in this case, only these two points. I'm not selecting this guy because it's bigger than re the rectangle. But if I make it bigger, I select everything. If I select from the right to the left, anything that is uh, 
touch it by the rectangle, not necessarily fully uh, enclosed on the rectangle, but just touching it will be selected. So you see the difference here and then here. Okay, what I want to do now is take this point and this point and move it down. So five units down. And when I finish editing the curve, I press ESC and it turns off the control points. Okay, so let's make one line for each leg to close it. I'll take here polyline and I will go to O snap here on the bottom and O snap will try to snap to objects. So if I use only end, it will snap at the end points of an object and we'll show here end. If I use near, it, every time I get close to, it will snap also. In our case, we're gonna use end, select this end and this end and press enter and do the same on the other side. So if I want to repeat a command, the last one, I don't need to come here and click or type it again. I can basically press enter or space and it's already repeating the last command. So I click here and here and enter again. And now I have all these four different curves. I want to join them in one single curve. So I select it all. And here I have a join component, this one, a join command, or I can type join and press enter. And now it's one single curve. So let's draw the shorter side of the table. I will double click front and here you have some zoom options. So basically, if I use the mouse scroll, I can zoom in and zoom out in any view. If I right click and hold, I pan the view on top, on front and right. If I right click and drag and drop, I rotate the view here. If I want to pan on perspective, I need to hold shift and right click. So I will use this curve to make the, 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 the elevation on the other side. So I will rotate it. So to rotate, I can click here or I can just type rotate. So I'll find the midpoint of this line. So here on the O snap, there is this mid checkbox. I check it and now I can find the midpoint. But before I click, I will make sure that here it says copy, yes. So I'm making a copy of this curve. So here, mid, and then I can type 90 for 90 degrees, press enter, and here it is. And to end, I press enter, and now I have both. So, I will make this side slightly smaller than this side. So I will move this curve 
45 units on this direction. So I type 45, I press enter, and then I click. And then I will use this curve to cut this curve. So there's two ways. <clears throat> I can split it. So I keep both sides. So see if I click on split, it says select object to split. I say it's the curve, press enter. And then it says select the cutting object, the object that will cut. And I can say is this curve. So now it doesn't look like anything happened. But if I select, I have both. So we'll just undo it. And now I will show you how to use string. So string, it says select the cutting object, which means the object that will cut. So I take this one, enter, and then select object to string. If I click here, it trims this one. If I click here, it trims here. So I want to string here and here. Okay? And then enter when done. So now I have only one side of the leg. Da, da, da. So I will need to mirror it. So to mirror, I can type mirror, press enter. Since I, I read selected this curve, it's just asking me start of mirror plane. I say it starts here, and with ortho on, I can go up to show that this is the plane, not this. This is the plane, and here we have both, and now I will join them. So, I don't want to have this sharp angle here. I want to put some uh, a, a, a circle here. So there is a command called fillet. So fillet radius I'll use, let's try five, let's say. And then I click here and here it makes this fillet. And then let's do it again. I press space or enter. To repeat the last command, I say here and here, fill it. Enter here and here, fill it. Enter here and here, fill it. Great. Right now, we only have these curves. Let's make it solid. Let's have surface and solids here. Okay. So, here, you probably have on your window this menu here. It's all the layers of the files, the file. This is the active layer with this check, it's the default layer. And I have the color of the layer, and here I can visualize it or lock it. So let's go to the layer one. Let's rename it default. I will rename it as curves. Layer one, I will rename it as solids. And here now I can turn on and off the pre preview of the layer and I can lock it. If I lock it, I cannot add it anymore. So let's extrude these curves to make solids. So I can say extrude CRV. CRV means curve, extrude curve. Select curve to extrude. I choose this one, enter. And then there is the distance. So I can choose the direction also, but this is the right direction that I want. I can say both sides, no is okay. And I can say solid, yes, I want it solid. 
and the let input no i don't want to delete the original curves and yeah this is it so i was saying two centimeters and enter and now i will do the same thing for this other one two centimeters enter so it's a solid but doesn't really look like a solid the thing is that you can change the way rhino shows you the, the, the on the viewport so if you right click on perspective you can have wireframe that only draws the lines you can have shaded that shows the surface itself you can have rendered that it will use some material that you can set up here on this circle and you're gonna have like shadows and there is some other views that you can check for example ghosted it's a kind of shade that, that you can see through and yeah I, I suggest you to check and and you'll see that most of the time we use wireframe shaded rendered or ghosted it depends on the case so i will use shaded and now these legs should be at the extremities of the table so let's do the following i will turn off the preview of curves so i don't have the curves anymore and i can say move this leg from the midpoint here from the midpoint here to the midpoint here i can say mirror i can type zero and press enter and it's using this zero here so copy is yes and i can say yeah this is the mirror plane aha uh -huh. and now i can take this one say move i can use ends from this end to this end or even better if i want to avoid this overlapping i can say from this end to this end here and now i can mirror it again so mirror i can say zero and i can show that i'm using on this axis nice so let's put the top solid so i can use this box here first corner of base i'll say this corner second corner of base i'll say this corner and height i'll say two centimeters boom here it is we have our table I just want to show you one little thing. Uh, let's zoom them all on our viewports. So I can come and click with this one. So I select this viewport and say this one. I can select this viewport and say this one. I can select this one and zoom extent i can select this one and zoom extent okay so there's a very nice command called make 2d so objects to draw i will select all the objects press enter when done enter and then <coughs> i can choose how to make how this 2d drawing so for example perspective projection view and you can change the preview 
the preview. So for example, the projection, I will use third angle projection. Um, you can have hidden lines, so no. So for example, if I turn on hidden lines, I will be able to see this line that is here. If I turn it off, I don't see it. So let's use it just for now. And group object, okay. And layer name, make 2D. So I say, okay. It will take some time. And now I have all the elevation drawings. So these are real curves from Rhino. And here I can put dimensions, for example. So if I go here on top on drafting, I can use all these different kinds of dimensions, like horizontal, vertical, or linear, I will use linear. I can say, yeah, from here to here, from here to here, and here I can see the value, from here to here, and if I select this one, I can go to properties, and here on top, I have this linear dimension style. So I can change the dimension of it. If it's too small, I can say, yeah, make it five times bigger, for example. So in my workflow, after I make all the dimensions and I put all the text, I select the 2D drawing and I export it as Adobe Illustrator and I use Illustrator to change the line weight, to change the colors, to make it a more beautiful drawing. So another nice trick is to overlap the linear drawing from make 2 d with a render that I can make or right clicking here and using render it or and, and then right clicking again and saying capture to file and here I can check some options and increase the scale if I want to increase the resolution or I can click on this sphere and use the default render tool that now I'm using Rhino Render, but personally I rather V-Ray and you're gonna have uh, an image that you can overlap on Illustrator. So then here you save it and you can also do the same for all other views. In this case, it's not so nice because it's just a flat surface. So let's do a vase on top of this table. So let's use this control point curve, or I just type curve and press enter. And let's draw a profile of the vase, just half of it, something like that. And we're gonna use a revolve surface command. So here on this icon, if you cascade it, you can see all surface creation commands like surface from three or four points, surface from planar curves, surface from network of curves, 
loft that we're gonna see soon, patch, blah, blah, blah. But here you have revolve. So select curves to revolve. I choose this curve, press enter when done, enter. Start of revolve axis. So with O snap on and end on, I will go to this point. And now I need to make a straight line on this direction to say that this is the axis. So, or I can turn ortho on again, or I can hold shift to temporarily turn ortho on. Or if ortho is on here and I hold shift, I temporarily turn ortho off. Personally, I rather to use ortho off, but this is something personal, it's up to you. So I choose this axis and I can or type the angles of the rotation or in our case, it's a full circle. So I can come here and click on full circle and here I have our vase. So I want to put this vase in another layer so I can select the vase. I go to the next layer, I right click it and I can say change object layer. So now this vase is on this layer two that I will rename as vase. And let's give thickness for this vase. So also, I will take this little curve here. Now you can see the selection menu. It appears when I click somewhere on the screen that I have more than one geometry. So if I click here, I have the surface. If I click here, or other ambiguous parts. So for example, if I come here and click, 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 click here, I need to choose one of these two. Here's the same. So I can click here, I can see the curve, I can see the surface, I will select the curve, right click vase and say change object layer. Super. Okay, so let's offset the surface like we did with the curve. I can do the same with the surface. So here on this uh, icon, I have the surface manipulation commands and here I have offset surface. So select surface to offset. I will choose this one, press enter. And I will see that there is these arrows pointing where is the surface normal direction. So it will offset on this direction. If I click here on flip all, it will offset on the opposite direction. But I want to offset towards inside and distance, I will say one is good. Just one detail, just because I want to show you more comments, I will say solid no. So I press enter and here I have both surface. Since uh, my active layer is solid, it created it on the solid surf, uh, layer. I can change my active layer clicking on this arrow here, or I can come here on the bottom and select vase. And again, I will put the surface on the vase layer. So let's make a solid from this two surface. So here I have curve from object cascade and here I have duplicate border or I just type dupe border. So say I want to duplicate from this surface and from this surface. And now I have all these curves. So I want to show you that here we are seeing the curve and the poly surface and here the curve and the surface. So I will select both surface and poly surface and I will hide it. So if I click here, I hide the object. 
if I right click here, I show the object. Or I can basically just type height and press enter. And now I have both curves. Um, I will make a polyline from this point to this point. And now I will use a surface creation command called sweep two rails. So first rail I will say is this curve. Second rail I will say is this curve. And the cross section I will say is this one. And then press enter when done, enter. And here is my new surface. I can change some settings here. And if you change, you can see how it affects in real time. But as it is, it's, it's good for, 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 for this model. And now I want to join all these objects. So I say show again. I select this surface. I select the new surface and the inner surface. And I can say join. So now it's one single object. As you can see here. So let's make something more funky, more freeform. Please go to the right view. We're gonna make a light object here. So take a control point curve and make like a free form curve like that. And you see that when you get close to the end point, you can click on top of it and it will make a closed curve. So let's copy this curve seven times in one direction. We're gonna use a command called array. So number of number in x direction, let's say seven, i direction one, z direction one. And I'll click from here and you can visually see how it moves and then enter to accept enter so nice we have all these curves i will select them all and move it to be on the center of the table okay i want to make all these curves slightly different and i will show you um, two different, three different ways. So the first one is I will select one of these curves and I will use a scale command, but not a normal scale, a scale 3D. I will use a scale 2D. So I can type scale 2D or I can come here and right click on this icon. So a scale 2D will only scale in two dimensions. As you can see here, it's scaling um, in, in, in Y and Z, but not in X. Okay, so let's make another one with scale 1D. So if I say scale 1D, if I type scale 1D and press enter, can click on the center, can click somewhere outside, and you see that I only scale it on the Y axis. Okay. The other way is to turn control points on. As I show you before, pressing F10 or clicking on that icon. And then you can play around with these points. And please let's do the same with all other curves. 
in such a way that it starts with small curve here and then it's a bigger curve here and a smaller curve here. Okay, so all curves are different. Let's take all these curves and put in a new layer. So change object layer and I will call light curves. And I will choose as active layer, layer four and I will call light object. Okay, so now I will use a surface command that is very powerful and you will use it a lot from now on. It's called loft. So if you pay attention, you can see that every icon shows how it creates a curve, uh, a surface. So the surface is always blue and in white you can see the input curves. So from planar object, you have two curves. From loft, you have these curves, and the loft is passing through these curves. And then surface from edge curves, you can see that the edge curves are white, and then it goes on. So select curves to loft, because I chose loft. And I will select the curves in the order. And press Enter. So you should always try to keep this line um, in the closest distance from the one curve to the next curve. So for example, here is good. If it was like that, it would be a problem, you see? So I will put it back here. Press Enter. And here you can choose the style of the surface you are creating. So I will put some render it because then you can see a little bit better maybe. So you have normal that we are using now. You have loose that will not follow completely the, the surface, the curves. So here you can see with, with normal, it passes through the curve. And then you have tight, that will be even closer. And you have straight sections. That is very nice because a straight section will be always a developable surface, which means that if you unroll the surface, you can print in, and, and fold paper to achieve this geometry or uniform. So we are using normal, and if you say close at loft, it will try to go from this curve to the first curve. In our case, it will be something strange, but let's say if you were doing like a donut, you would use close at loft. So, okay. So now we have this surface. Uh, let's make a structure for this object. So I can turn off light curves and I will offset this loft. So offset surface, offset SRF. It's offsetting uh, towards outside, okay. Distance, let's make distance three centimeters and let's say solid no and press enter. Okay, so I have the inner surface and the outer surface, and I will create the structure in between them. So I will go to the next layer, layer five, I'll turn it active, and I will rename it as light structure. And I will use a command called contours now. So I type contour, and I will select object for contours, this surface and this surface, enter. 
the corner plane base point from where it starts to make the contours or all the sections. I will say somewhere here, for example. Direction perpendicular. So if I want to cut it like that, I need to say that the perpendicular is this direction. And the distance between contours. I will say every 10 centimeters. Let's see. Super. So I will turn off the light object. And you see that these are fine because they are both closed curves. But you're going to see that some of them have this self-intersecting part that is not ideal. So I will select them, try type trim, and delete these parts. So now it's better. And you can do it on every curve. So I select the curve. I press trim. I click on the parts that I don't want. And then I press enter to go to the next one. Enter again. I delete the part that I don't want. And you can do it. Please always remind to finish the command, select the next curve, and then trim it. And be careful that sometimes there will be like a little part of the curve that will continue there. You should pay attention to it, to not leave any little part. OK. So now that everything is nice and clean, I will use a command called surface from planar curves to create surface in between each curve. So this one and this one, planar surface. This one and this one, planar surface. Maybe I can select them all and try it. Yeah, it works also. So now I have all this surface. And I want to give thickness to it. So I can use extrude surface. So instead of curve, surface. Select surface to extrude. I will choose all this surface. And here you can see that I can define the distance. I will say solid, yes. Delete input, yes, because I don't want the surface anymore. And distance, I will say one centimeter and press enter. So now I have all these solids. That is the structure. I can turn on light object layer again. I can delete the outside surface. And now I have my freeform object, my revolved object, and my simple orthogonal object. I can delete this old drawing from the make 2D. And now I can make 2D again. So I type make 2D. I select all the objects. I press enter. OK, it will take a few seconds. And here it is, all the side view and top view and a perspective. 
I can make a rendered view of this site, a rendered view of this site, and a rendered view of this one, and capture all the views and extract this 2D drawing and put them all together on Illustrator. I would like to show you uh, one last set of comments that I think it's really important. Uh, you don't need to follow what I'm doing. Uh, I will show you, and you, you can repeat by yourself, pause in the video. Basically, I will create one rectangle, or one, one, one box, and one sphere in the corner of this box. So super. And then I will copy it three times. So I will show you three comments called Boolean. So here you have Boolean union, Boolean difference, and Boolean intersection. And the icon kind of explains to you what each one does. So Boolean union unites two objects, as you can see here, these two spheres. Boolean difference uh, subtracts from one solid another solid. As you can see here, a sphere in blue and a sphere that became empty. And at the end, Boolean intersection that will only keep the intersection between two solids. So Boolean union will be the first one. It asks me select surface, a poly surface to union. I'll say this one and this one, enter. Now it's one single object. So here you can see two objects. Here is one single object. <coughs> the other Boolean, Boolean difference, will subtract one solid from the other one. So for example, select surface to subtract from, I'll say it from this cube. Select surface or poly surface to subtract with, I'll say, is this sphere. And here you can see the cube subtracted the sphere. At the end, the last one is Boolean intersection. And here you can see that only the intersection between both geometries will exist now. So this is the end of Rhino 101 course. I would just like to strongly recommend you to watch the Grasshopper tutorial. Rhino is super cool, but when it's running with Grasshopper, it's a really powerful design tool.